Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this 1974 BMW 2002, one of the most iconic models BMW has ever produced. Now, this one in particular was at my buddy Levin's shop next to the Audi GT. Can't find look how ironic this is. A power wash is sitting right next to it. It's like, look, pointing towards it. <laughs> yeah. Clean me, clean me. We purchased it. My goal here is to clean it up, hopefully get the engine running. Yep, just cool it in there. And get this thing off to a new home. That and a whole lot more on this episode of Drive and Protect. After negotiating a price of $1,000 for the Audi GT, which was cleaned up with the help, of course, of Jason Rose and Kevin Brown, then I flipped the car to my local parts guy, Axel, for nearly $3,900. Now, at the same time, I also purchased a BMW 2002 from Levin's dad for $2,000, as they needed to clear out the shop and make some room on the same day. So for a total of $3,000, I got two awesome cars that I hope someone drives once again. Think forward in or back in? I don't know. What are you doing to it? I don't know. Clean it. Let's go forward in. After removing the tarp and pushing it inside the studio, you can see just how dirty and patinaed out the paint is. But nowadays, these models are red hot. So I'm hoping I can get her back into shape and double my money. But first, it's time to clean up everything we can get our hands on and put our best foot forward. The exterior is not only dirty, but the jams are packed with years of junk. The paint is missing in some areas and decent in others, and the interior is stained with grease and sun-damaged carpets. Step one is to lift the car and remove the wheels. Next, I used Boost and Brute in the foam cannon reservoir and then filled it up with water before turning on the ammo pressure washer, attached the wand, and of course, double checked the sprayer tip that makes sure it's secure with an initial safety spray away from the car. You wanna always do that. Now, I'm power washing mostly to dislodge the junk that you can see, but on the other hand, I'm also power washing the paint to see how it reacts to the water. Is the dirt coming off? If so, how easily? In this case, is the paint coming off or am I causing more damage in the process? That sort of thing. So power washing is really fun, but can also give you a bit of info about the paint during the power washing process. In the engine, I quickly covered up the carburetor with plastic before blowing out all the tight spots, then coating it in foam to work on the grease and the grime. I repeated the same steps on the exterior paint as well, giving it adequate dwell time while I lifted the 2002 and then focused on the undercarriage. As you can see, I'm now wearing a face shield because of the Trans Am detail a few weeks ago when I just randomly found a pocket of dirt that kicked back in my face. Anyhow, after I've rinsed the underneath, I soaked the undercarriage as well and used my new scrub brush designed with boar's hair on the outside to carry the liquid around during cleaning. And of course, the red nylon for heavier cleaning as you push the scrub brush with more downward pressure. It's super cool. It's what we refer to as a dual density brush because it has two types of bristles in one specific scrub brush. That's why I'm wearing a shield. Look at my arm. With the car back down, I washed the paint with the blue microfiber wash towel One, and two, emblem three. brush. Wash the car. Happy Larry washing his car. Gonna go home and sleep, sleep, sleep. The goal here is just to continue to flush out the years of dirt from sitting outside and later on inside in his dusty workshop. On the engine compartment, I added Titan 12 degreaser for the stubborn spots and did the same thing on the jams as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the valve covers were especially grimy, and after a bit of stiff bristle and wheel brush agitation, the life really started to come back. I'm not exactly sure it's gonna run, but it certainly looks a lot better than it did. First thing I did on the inside was to remove the old Recaro seats, which is pretty cool. I'd never seen that in there before, revealing sun damaged and dirty carpets. So I decided to remove most of them from the car to clean with a power washer outside later. Now look under the vertical back seat portion and you will see two metal tabs with a Phillips head screwdriver through a hole in each one. Again, about one third in from either side. Back the screws out and jiggle the seat upwards and out. That's why there's two screws in there. Once the back was down, of course, it revealed a nice little mouse nest with the renter still inside, meaning it was dead, but it must have been recent because he still looked in pretty good shape. Anyhow, it was now time for a thorough vacuum, but notice all the mouse droppings underneath. For the carpets, I used Titan 12 degreaser on the dark, greasy spots for obvious reasons. Then I mixed the Brute soap in the foam cannon and left the cleaner soaking within the carpet fibers. After a few minutes, I used the dual density carpet brushes with two different fibers to control the level of cleaning based on how hard you push. It allows you to have two brushes in one that you control with your pressure, meaning pushing downward. So that's what makes it super cool. These are specially made and incredibly useful. For more information, visit my website at ammonyc.com. After the scrubbing, I power wash them thoroughly and you can just see the dirt kind of ooze out onto the pavement. It's incredibly satisfying when you're doing it. Once I was done, I hung them up. To do that, I used an old hood stand that I had in the backyard. It helps them drip dry when you leave it in the sun. While the steamer and the steam vac were warming up, I then focused on cleaning the wheels with Plum Wheel Cleaner and my new brushes, which obviously you can tell I'm really excited about.
One of my favorite features of the BMW 2002 are the rims. They're really cool. There's 20 different spokes in here. What that means is from a detailing perspective, you have about 40 different crevices you have to clean. Now we find this a lot on BMWs and other uh, German cars. And what you gotta do is get in there with your brush. Now, typically when you have a normal brush, this is a prototype, you're gonna have a flat little area like that, just a brush with a flat top. Now what happens is to get into that tight area, you either have to really push hard, which is gonna make the fibers kind of spread out, not a good look, plus you're gonna blow through a lot of brushes, or you're just not gonna get in there. So what I've been working on, I'll put it against my skin, you can see it there. This is what we call a two-tier brush. So we have one layer here, and another little skinny pointed one here, so that we can get into those creases and crevices. A lot of times I'll just kind of push like that, tap, tap, tap. Then you can get in and scrub as you normally would, and it actually works out quite well. So I'm gonna repeat the process on the rest of these, and they're gonna look great. With the wheels looking much better now, I started cleaning the remaining carpet on the inside that wasn't as easily removable as the other carpet, as well as the old Recaro seats. Step one is to spray some shag fabric cleaner first, then use a carpet scrubber to work the product into the fibers. For the heavy spots, you can also use an interior brush as well. Then use the steam back to suck out the shag cleaner. And of course, adjust and re-scrub on stubborn spots, etc. But when you're done, the reservoir will actually look like this. Be sure to clean it out thoroughly before reusing it, or especially when you're going to store it for the night, otherwise it'll smell the next day. On the vinyl parts, I first sprayed lather and then I scrubbed with the steamer and of course the heat it produces to increase the speed of the cleaning process. When done, I like to use compressed air to remove the last bits of moisture. Next, I repeated the same steps on the interior vinyl and plastics. Okay, now check this out. This is kind of cool to a nerd like me. I just shampooed this entire carpet. Over here looks pretty good. Over here has a little bit of damage. Now this is the same sort of concept that we had in the Triumph. This is sun damage, UV damage. So it's been sort of sunburned, so to speak. So the carpet itself is clean, but it still looks pretty messed up. It's sort of like going to the beach, getting a suntan, coming home, taking a shower. Your skin is clean, but you still have a tan. That's what you're seeing right here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is shampooing the rest of it. Why? Because the new owner is likely gonna remove the carpets. I think they're inexpensive to replace. Uh, but in the process of doing that, I wanna make sure that he's safe. So we're gonna continue cleaning everything for the new owner.
Now that everything is clean, my last step is of course to disinfect the area. Now the product I'm using is called Restore. It's an EPA approved car interior disinfectant. This product took many years to develop and be certified by the United States government. Allow it to sit for about two minutes wet then wipe it dry. I have a ton of info on this product on my website, but just keep in mind, there's cleaning and then there's disinfecting. They're two very different concepts. Restore also works on sanitizing fabrics and carpets as well. Finally, I added mousse interior moisturizer to bring back the suppleness of the material and for some UV protection. When you're done, buff it off with a microfiber towel and it'll look deep and rejuvenated without being shiny. With the carpets now dry, I put them back inside the car just for presentation purposes, reinstalled the seat back, screwed it in, put the seat bottom in, snapped that one in, and then both the Recaro seats once again, which was an exercise in patience to say the very least. Okay, the interior is clean, it smells really good, and more importantly, it's safe for the next person, so I do think that's a huge selling point. Now on to the outside. As you can see, there's a bunch of patina here, but in this era of Radwood, where you run what you run, this is really cool. So uh, what I'm trying to do is just exfoliate it. If I were to use the 21, meaning my normal polisher, it's very likely I'm just gonna go through the paint and you're gonna see metal pop out, obviously, because it's rusted. So what we're gonna use is this one here. I haven't used this in a long time. This is called the Cyclo, it has two pads here. It, I believe it's a little bit safer, and so I'm using the green pad as well. That's a more of a scrubbing type action. So the goal here is just to exfoliate, pull out as much of the junk, you can hear it, as possible, bring back a little bit of shine and hopefully get this engine running and back on the road. Um. I'm behind the camera, check this out. You can see it's a little bit smoother. Is it shiny? No, of course not. But move over here, you can see it's a lot more kind of discolored and funky. This just looks better on this side. It's much nicer, look at the light. No light over here. And as we come over here, there's the tiniest little bit. Every bit matters here. I'm sorry, but this thing looks cool. Looks even better with the rust on it. Oh no, I think I'm falling in love again. <laughs> The Cyclo polishers head rotates in overlapping motions identical to your hand motion, but only quicker, which makes sense on a car with compromised paint like this one. When I was all done with the paint scrubbing, the paint looked a whole lot better, so I added some Reflex Pro finishing wax because it was quick and easy. It added some pop and protection, of course. It took 10 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. But when I was done, I used polished by hand on the bumpers just to kind of give it that last little bling. With the car up, I put the wheels back on, I added mud tire dressing to the rubber, I cleaned the glass, and then afterwards it looked a thousand times better than when I found it. So I called my friend Axel from Axel's Foreign Car Parts to come over and see what could be done to get this car to at least turn over. 
when I bought the car a few months ago from my buddy Levin, he said that it was actually running three or four years ago. So that's a plus, but I did want Axel's opinion. Having it running or at least turning over will make the car much more valuable when I go to sell it. Hello. Hey, Axel. Right now, there is no battery in it, so that's probably important. No, indeed. All right. Later that day, Axel showed up with all his goodies. It's gotta be Axel. Ah, what's Larry. up? You come bearing gifts. Well. Look what I got here. What's that? 1974 BMW 2002. You got more stuff out here? Wrong. It's a 73. 73? Yeah. You why know why? That? 73 had the round tail light. 74 did not. Looks pretty snazzy now. Smells much better. It's delightful. Got a little Recaro seats in here. Yeah, they Pulled don't... out the back. We found a little mouse nest. Cleaned up the dash. These are pretty simple cars. As long as we have the basic ingredients, fuel, spark, battery. Hat, and you're good to go. <laughs> so I think first we should probably check the oil. Make sure there's oil in there. There is. And uh, belt's tight. Coolant. Make sure we have some coolant. Yep, there's coolant in there. Contact. All right. This okay. is good news. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not seized, obviously. No. Now okay. we just gotta find out, uh, we need to get some fuel in there. And uh, let's check to see if we have any spark. Okay, go ahead. Crank it? Yeah. All right, no spark. No spark? No spark. But that's not surprising. The car's been sitting for a couple of years. These cars have points, not electronic ignition. Yeah. So chances are the points are corroded. So the next thing he did was play with the points, <clears throat> added some fuel to the carburetor, and then this happened. Okay, we'll drop the gas in here. All right, Larry, hit it. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Not bad. Unbelievable. Again? Yeah. Not bad, huh? Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Too bad we can't really drive it. Ballpark, what's this worth? 37. 37. 100. Hmm. Dollars. Are you interested in the car? Yeah. For your collection? Well, collection. Drive it around a little bit. All right, on the little bit of research that I've done, I think yep. it's closer to more 4,500, 4,800, something like that. Where'd that come from? Uh, well, I, you know, I did a little well, bit of research, but I'm not trying to see what the expert says here. Ah, okay. In this condition, I can imagine it needs brakes. watching too much TV. I, that's probably the case. Well, let's well, say, let's say 4,500. What do you think? 4,500? Nah, nah, Where are you not at? gonna happen. There's no brakes. We don't even know if the clutch works. But it's clean yeah. and it comes with rust. That, I won't charge you extra for that. Mm. Well, it does have some good points. The strut towers aren't rusted. The ones in the trunk are pretty straight. They're not rusted. Car's not leaning to one side. We don't know what, I don't know what the other side looks like you do. It's, uh, it's a little rusty. Yeah, it's a little rusty. It's a little rusty, I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, 42? <laughs> 42 sounds reasonable, but I want that hat. Oh, now you gotta pay 50 more. <laughs> You're a good man. <laughs> Enjoy the car. I know it's going to a good home. I hope to see it you is. on the road one day. You will. That's so awesome. Many, so many guests, but yeah. <laughs> now. It'll roll. Hey, we're in the mirror. Uh, that's extra.
is something else. Well, another car saved. Back on the road. He's happy, I'm happy. As always, guys, if you have any questions, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com. If you have a car that needs saving, you know where to find me. I'll see you guys. On next week's episode, Jason Rose and Kevin Brown help me restore a forgotten tornado left in a garage home out in Long Island. We pull it out and get this lead sled ready for the owner's son's wedding later this year. Be sure to subscribe and check out our new episodes on Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern time. As always, thanks for watching. See you next week.